The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with Jackson Pinky Pinkowski. Everybody loves him. He's a fan favorite. He's a client favorite. Everybody loves them some Jackson, including me. Um, today, I thought, actually, this is coming really from some of our Next Level clients because, um, <laughs> and I love you guys, Next Level clients, but sometimes they will kind of be like, well, I don't want to say play mom against dad, but they'll talk to one of the coaches who says something and they don't really like it. And then another coach will say something else and they don't like that. Are they white? They like one better than the other. They don't like either. And they'll, they'll be like, well, Jackson said, or Mike said, and we kind of had that. So I'm like, you know what? Jackson and I will just do a podcast in front of God and everyone and get this out on the table. So um, what the feedback I've been hearing is Jackson, who does um, runs does the bulk of helping our clients get clients uh, online, right? Social media, pay traffic, organic traffic, all that. Jackson is the go-to on that. Um, and I get them being like, well, someone's got to manage my social media. Who's going to, you know, answer my Facebook messages, or if I put an ad, who's going to respond to that? Or somebody direct messages me or Facebook messages me, you know, and if I have an Instagram, who's going to make all the content for me and they get overwhelmed. Right. And obviously should you have some content on your social media? Yeah, of course. Like people aren't just going to look at your website. Many people won't even look at your website. They're going to look for you on Instagram or, you know, TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, just wherever your clients go. Um, so is it a good idea to have some of that stuff? Of course it is, but they go a little far when they get overwhelmed and like, I've got to spend 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a month having someone quote unquote manage my social media or they just feel like they need content, but they don't really draw a line from the content to creating leads. So I just want to have a conversation with Jackson on one, what do we do to not get hurt, right? So we don't look like we're a zombie company where people try to find us online and there's just nothing, or you know, there's a Facebook page with like two pictures and they're all a year and a half old and there's no activity or Instagram or TikTok or fill in the blank. So we don't want to be that. Um, but we also don't want to spend a bunch of time and money just so we impress our friends with like, oh, look at this. I've got a thousand followers and all this content that's good. And like, great. How many of those have turned into clients? I don't know. Is always the answer for being honest. Or people say they like it. Great. How many actually turned into clients from the content? So I wanted to get Jackson's take on really what too much is and what not enough is and how you, Jackson, would recommend owners of cleaning companies walk that line so they're not wasting a bunch of time and money but they're not also kind of being naked out there with their socials yeah yeah you said it totally right it's it's not um unless you're unless you're a really large and this is i should, I should preface this by saying it's really and this is big emphasis on residential cleaning um but unless you're you're an extremely large business maybe even like a franchise or something your posts any type of posts you do those aren't lead drivers they're exactly what mike said they're they're to make sure you're not a dead page right you're not just like a, a, a something out there in the ether um, that might be a scam or it looks weird to people because typically the the flow of individuals is if they they click an ad or they interact they're looking for a cleaning company they interact with you at some point they're going to find you on other platforms, whether that be Instagram, Facebook, or even Google, they're going to look at your Google My Business. And they are much more likely to interact with a business that has high reviews, has active, quote unquote, active profiles, and um, has some sort of presence versus somebody that has nothing out there or hasn't been updated in, in weeks because you wonder if they're even interested in the business, if the business exists anymore, or if customers even appreciate the, the job that the business is doing. Um, so it is really just to uh, it's to backstop all of your your history so people can find you and people see that you're you're active and available. Um, this content isn't, yeah, a lot of times people think it needs to be this amazing thing. So it's, no, it just needs to be a simple, simple post, you know, once a week, three times a week on the platforms of your choosing 
to to kind of showcase that that you're around, that you appreciate your customers, showcase your core values, pain points, things you solve, stuff like that. Um, because and then you have to realize you're not going to get comments, you're not going to get likes. World, the entire world isn't going to see this post. It is literally just there, so your potential customers see that you're active and alive. So what would and I guess there's really two parts to it. One is the proactive content creating. And two is the reactive response to any messages. So let's talk about them kind of separate. On the proactive content creating, what, I don't want to say what the minimum, like we're trying to get away with anything, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What's the minimum like someone would need to put in terms of content? Well, I guess we even we'll just, we'll just start big and go small. How many platforms, right? So like doing, you know, cause there's, you know, TikTok, LinkedIn, yeah, at this recording, you know, Facebook, uh, Facebook pages, Facebook groups, um, Instagram, of course, what am I missing? Twitter, like how many of those email marketing, you know, there's all, you know, a website, there's all, just all the stuff that you could, and those are just the, you know, uh, there's, you know, if you want Pinterest, there's like, you want to get, none of <laughs> yeah. there's a bunch of them. Yeah. But yellowpages.com. You know, uh, yeah. Snapchat. Like there, you know, there's some oldies, but I don't know about goodies, but five or six kind of main ones. How many do I need to be on? How yeah, much yeah. content do I need to put in and like how much time and or money should I plan on putting in this just to not suck? We'll get to like getting clients later, but just to not suck and not to look stupid. Like how, how would you write if you own a cleaning company? Well, you're, you're a bad example. Cause you're probably good at this. You do more, but as you coach our clients who are running a company and have employees and just have other stuff to do, what do you coach them? Yeah. At, at a bare minimum, I tell everybody do one Google, my business post a week which is literally like you could write a sentence or three sentences or you put a picture um, just once a week. That's the bare and minimum you can do. What would the sentence be like? Happy Friday area. Got any fun plans this weekend? You know, like <laughs> it's as simple as that. Or, or this I wanted to ask Veterans I think Day is then, coming up. People are going to be like, oh my gosh, do I have to like give a bunch of cleaning tips or how to like, I love that what you said was perfect, Jackson. Happy Friday. How you all have any plans for the weekend? That is such a great, like, that's it. Like, yeah, that's it. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, that that is it. I mean, leverage, you can talk about things that are going on in your community. Like I said, Veterans Day is this Saturday, I think, or Sunday. Um, so I know a place that parades or things like that. Holidays, it, it can do nothing with cleaning whatsoever. It's just a post out there. Do that once a week. Do it on Fridays. Do it on Mondays. Whatever day you feel like you want to do it. Um, to take it one step a little further beyond that, I would say do something on Facebook and Instagram because they're the same platform. So whatever you design on one can go on the other at the exact same time with no extra time or effort added to it. Um, and that can be the same thing. You can post what you post at Google to your Facebook and Instagram. Well, Instagram has to be an image. But Facebook can be just a simple sentence saying, hey, what are you doing this weekend? And, and even bear- Instagram, you could Google, um, you know, GIF or picture of, you know, fun weekend plans or weekend plans gone wrong or guy recovering from the weekend or guy looking forward to the weekend. And then you could just literally put on top of that, you know, what plans you have for the weekend. And it's a guy, you know, doing a dance party or some super easy. Exactly. Yeah. It, it should take you no more than 10, 15 minutes. Uh, depending on your internet speed, that's usually the limiting factor. Um, and you do that once a week. Um, and that is the bare minimum is what I try to tell people. It it, it should, that's that's what you can do. Um, and the time it should take you, like I said, is, is really quick. And the more you do it, the faster you get with it. And uh, like you'll be able to quickly think of something to say or something to post, um, which will then, you know, let you expand to maybe doing it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as opposed to just Monday and Friday or something. Um, and then the cost, the cost to start this is nothing but your own time. So, you know, maybe you start 30 minutes, that's 30 minutes of time sucked out of your day to do this. Um, but it provides way more value than than what the cost is. And then as you grow, there are potentials, you know, to automate it, to to hire VAs to help you do the postings instead. Um, but again, it is not very costly. It is not very time consuming on anybody's front. And I've used this example before. Things that shouldn't connect and don't make sense, people make sense in their mind. So the research shows if you get onto a plane and so the guy before you's trash is in the little pouch in front of you, 
uh, when polled, the people who came into a dirty seat versus a clean seat, when polled about their perceived safety of the plane, the people that came into a dirty seat polled saying that they thought the plane was less safe. And obviously the team maintaining the plane and the team cleaning the thing have nothing to do with one another. So people make that connection. Even though one has nothing to do, you know, it's not like they put a sign going, we are really good at maintenance on the plane or none of that stuff. Just they saw a dirty plane or a clean plane and they assumed it had something to do with the the, the way the plane would operate. Same thing goes with social media. If you don't post anything, people might assume the cleaning's not going to be as good or you're not a good company. If you do post something just like, here was Halloween. My kids were so cute last week, or I saw some cute trick or treaters at my door. Here's a picture. That's it. Like Jackson, nothing to do with cleaning. They're just going to assume these are nice people. They're human beings. They're going to be far more interested in that than pictures of dirty house, clean house, like which is what kind of people do. So give yourself permission to just have some fun. And if most of you, especially on the residential side out there, kind of are Instagram people anyway, all my 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 wife and her brother's conversation and many of her friends has just evolved from and Lindsay on our team has just devolved from actual conversations of sending memes and and you know posts from Instagram back and forth to one another. So if you find something that is cute, share that. It doesn't even have to be anything spectacular. Real quick, Cleaning Nation, if you can think about how you found out about this podcast, maybe a tweet, a Facebook message, iTunes search, some sort of Instagram post, the only way we grow is word of mouth. We don't do paid ads. We don't run ads. You are it. The only ask I have is if you're getting value, share the love. However you found out about this, if it's a review or post, whatever it is, do that. Pay it forward so the next cleaning company owner can change their life as well. Back to the show. Okay, so now that we've kind of covered the minimum standard just to not look like a zombie page or a zombie brand how do you say god forbid we want to actually make some money with this thing like how would you turn a corner and be like okay we're going from you know look how kid you know a post or two a, a week on a couple of platforms just to make sure everything's alive how do we go to actually making some money or getting some clients or getting some leads yeah so so the cool thing the, the first thing i spoke about the posting on google once a week um i guarantee I, I can guarantee without a doubt, because I've seen it happen, if you post once a week for at least six weeks, um, your ranking on Google will will go up organically just because because Google sees you as active, alive in your area. So and just to be completely dumb in case there's some people that when you say posting on Google, what do you mean? A lot of people like are just like, a, a sentence is. on your, your company profile and Google my business. There's an option for you to post an update. That's literally what they call it. Post an update. Okay. And you can so, just post an update about your so company. If I Google. How do I post an update on Google? It will tell me it's pretty easy. They'll tell me what to do. Okay. Yeah, cool. exactly. So you do that once a week and after six weeks, I can guarantee you, you, you will show higher than you had before um in organic search rankings and that costs nothing but your time and that turns into more leads because if you you're more likely to show up people are more likely to interact with you if you have lsa ads or google ads running you have a better positioning overall that is a way that it turns right into leads now on the facebook side of things um facebook instagram uh these posts that you make um they they can be used in a variety of ways. So not only can you just post them on your own page, but you can use that content for uh, posting in groups. So local groups to get leads or information from people in there. And you can also use the posts themselves in ads, which is a really cool option. So if you have a really great post on your page or something you're really proud of, maybe an offer or something you want to highlight, you can use that as an ad to turn that into a lead um, or hopefully turn it into leads because then more people end up seeing it. Um, and then they will reach out either through your, your landing page or your funnel flow, however you have it set up there. So obviously we won't, we won't get too much into the paid traffic. We'll just stay into that. Well, let's actually move to the second piece. So I think that's pretty clear of like, okay, in less than a half hour a week, I can make a post or two per week in Google and Facebook slash Instagram. Like that's within a half hour a week, probably less. I can make one to three posts per week in both those platforms, pretty easy and fun and simple. Cool. You know, it's, it's what's funny, or I'll just add real quick, is I guarantee you, everybody listening to this probably spends an hour or more a day going through their own social medias, like scrolling through Instagram. So literally, you take a chunk of that to just, you can take a chunk of that to make exponential progress and growth for your business just by carving out a little bit of that 
to to making your own posts and not looking at other people's. The difference between being a content consumer and a content creator is is huge. I, I am both, and I get paid a crap ton, infinitely more um, for the content I create, which you guys are listening to right now, um, than the content that I consume. Okay, so let's talk about the other side, which is great. How do I handle, A, how do I generate actual human beings saying things to me and my brand. And then how do I kind of handle that? So this could be again, incoming emails could be forms that you have filled out, but it's most likely going to be if you put an ad or a post or you you know, you start a conversation, which is really the goal with any of the stuff that you're posting, who checks it, how do they check it? And how do we kind of turn the right ones into leads? Yeah. So, so oftentimes, um, oftentimes if you do an ad, like a paid ad, you'll have people that comment or sometimes people will comment. I would say nine times out of 10, they usually don't. Um, and the comments on these ads, you don't really want to interact with anyway. Um, just because they're, they're not good of good quality. You let the ad do its thing. That's a different funnel flow, right? But on organic posts or other, well, posts, I will say just a quick little hack for ads, you know, a lot of them are spammers or whatever, but even if they're not or saying crazy stuff or, you know, a lot of, I don't know what people get fussy about ads and yeah. they just say crappy things, but believe it or not, Facebook will, will reward your ad if you just have conversation. So if the guy's like, you look like a fool and you say, Jackson said that on my ad, not cool, Jackson. And I tag him back at Jackson. Exactly. What part of me do you think looks foolish? He's probably going to come back and go, your stupid face and your stupid hair. And I'm going to go at Jackson, how much stupid. And the, um, the beautiful thing is Facebook is like, okay, so you're, you're paying me for this ad, which I like. And then you're getting people, Jackson's not on Facebook and he sees, I tagged him and said, tell me how stupid I look. Well, I will go there and settle my, ex-. he comes. So now they're like, wow, I'm getting paid for the ad. And he's getting people to come back more to Facebook. So it can be a pain in the butt. You don't have to do that, but it is a little supercharger. Any engagement you get on Facebook, they will reward you for it. Um, that may or may not be worth the mental brain damage it takes for you to do it. But so I'm not recommending you do it. I'm just saying it isn't a bad thing to engage even with quote unquote bad traffic because Facebook will see your ad as bringing people to their site, which is what they ultimately want. Is that fair? Yeah. Is that ridiculous? Yeah, no, it's Facebook is any news is good news. So it's, it's any, any engagement is good engagement on Facebook. But, um, but yeah, uh, back to, back to organic engagement. Um, especially if you're posting things in like groups and whatnot, th- those are more likely, you know, better leads. So the, the way I like to put it and the way I like to coach people is you, you treat the comments as if you were having a face-to-face conversation with someone. Um, so, so you don't want to type a novel or anything. You're not having that type of type of conversation, but you'd interact with them as if they were, they came to your front door and were like, Hey, I would like to try your cleaning services or, Hey, I would like some more information. And you have a conversation with them through that. Same thing goes for messenger. If someone reaches out to you through Facebook messenger or Instagram messenger, it's the same process is you treat it as if it was a, a phone call. Um, really? So you try and get as much information, go back and forth and serve their needs as best as possible in that interaction. Um, because that is what goes a long way with people. And if you're like, well, what would I do in person? Ask questions. You know, someone came yeah. to your door, call on the phone or message. I want, you know, I want information about your cleaning services. You don't just start spewing information. Awesome. What what made you reach out? What what problem are you dealing with? What's going on in your world? What made you what made you look for help? Um, and for me, I like to get them on the phone sooner than later, but it doesn't yeah. have to be instant. Like you can still have a couple. Tell me a little bit about this. And then the fun thing is naturally what they're gonna do is gonna come to a thing which is too much over text, and then you just tell them. You know, well, how much is your price? I don't know. I'd have to get some more information about what you want. Well, I want this and the other. Hey, I want to help you, but this is kind of a lot over text. Why don't we just jump on a quick five minute call and we'll, we'll help you sort you sort you out? So the cool thing is, it's naturally going to go that anyway because it just it gets a little unwieldy. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of ground. I will let you finish, Jackson, with just any tips, tricks, secrets, benefits. If you owned a cleaning company, you wanted to get some leads organically today or in the next twenty days, what would you recommend our fine listeners do? In the next 20 days, um, y- y'all are, this is the best time of year. This is shopping central time of year. This is gift giving. This is awesome. Um, a really cool offer and a really cool idea that a lot of people are doing right now that I spoke about with like everybody at 10 this morning was buy one, gift, gift one. 
So mm-hmm. it's an amazing offer, amazing presentation they're doing. And those are all organic posts. Of course, they're running some of ads, but organic posts highlighting the season, highlighting their employees, because a lot of people are having year end parties right now with their employees. All of that makes a big difference, especially because a lot of people serve smaller communities, smaller neighborhoods, smaller areas where everybody's kind of tight knit. So if you have posts highlighting these things, these things, these offers that you're gifting, giving, giving back to everybody, that's awesome. So if you want to capitalize on that or if you want to start taking action on something now, that's what I would recommend. It's that time of year when people want to see these kinds of things and they're more likely to um, to interact um, and to make a change, especially going into the new year, new year, new me. I'm going to I'm done cleaning my house. I'm done with this junk. I'm finally going to take that leap and get a cleaning company. That is that is where we're at. A couple things on that. If you're like, why would I do buy one, give one? Like that gives away all my margins. Like, yeah. So say the cleaning costs you 200 bucks and you sell and you say, I'll give one for free. Or sorry, the cleaning's 200 bucks, costs you 100. So you're like, I don't make any money. Yeah. But the likelihood that the guy that did the buy one, give one turns into a recurring client high and the likelihood that the new person gets one is decent. So now you've got basically the opportunity to give two bids for recurring services and it doesn't cost you a thing. So that's that. Um, On the commercial side, and by the way, we coach weekly meetings, monthly parties, quarterly reviews. When you're doing those, those are great opportunities to create this content that we're talking about. You're already doing them. Just take a picture. Think of something funny somebody said or that happened at one of these activities and share them. Um, when it comes for those of you that are commercial going, what about me? What about me? Um, you know, for me, it'd be like new year's resolution to get rid of your cleaners or to stop fighting with your cleaners or stop begging your cleaners Inter, you know, you know, or is your, you know, yeah. If, if you want to enter the new year, clean, lose, lose dead cleaner weight or dead cleaner weight that you hate dealing with, give us a call or, you know, so just enter the conversation already in the client's mind. All right. Anything else, Jackson, you feel like we covered it. All right. No, you covered it perfect. Yeah, this is uh, this is my favorite time of year. It's great for for businesses, new and old, big and small. It's, it's the best. So, <laughs> man, a merry Christmas and happy. Yeah, Christmas. yeah, it's just it's just good. It's it's good overall. You know, it's only November six, but uh, they've already got the Christmas commercials going, so it gets me in a good mood. And I will tell you, Cleaning Nation, we get the same thing. A lot of guys about. Middle November, kind of where we're recording, we're recording this at the beginning, but pretty quick, start realizing I'm not going to hit my goals. I thought this was the year I got out of cleaning. I thought this was the year I hit 100 grand in profit. I thought this was the year, whatever. The, and then you guys start calling us. So if that's the case, um, you know, I'll just, just you can email me, Mike at growmycleaningcompany.com. Just like, Mike, I want a different 2024 than 23. I will email you back. Um, if you're like, that's too scary, just go to growmycleaningcompany.com. There's like a thousand podcasts. There's a Facebook group, tons and tons of free stuff and community. But sincerely, don't go into, if you really do want to have a different life and a different business, now is a great time of year to make that happen. Take some action, do something different, don't settle. See you soon, Clean Nation. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me in the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now, 602-932-6431. Give me a text, say hey, can't wait to meet you.